So I've been doing new urbanist planning uh, full-time really since 1993 and I've worked on probably about 60 or 70 projects over that time. Um, what it's important for me to communicate about the Grove is that uh, while I didn't work on it, it looks very much like the sort of plans that I do as ideal plans when I'm trying to develop a similar property. Most cities now are, are realizing that they're at a crossroads in terms of how they choose to grow. Finally, um, people see that there's a choice between whether they grow in a more kind of focused urban way um, around alternative transportation and walking and biking, or, or whether they continue what, what most cities, not all cities, but what most American cities have been doing since you know, the early 20th century, which is to kind of discard old neighborhoods in favor of new ones ever further out on the, on the edge. In my book, Walkable City, um, I start with this section that's called Why Walkability? And I, I remark with great pleasure on how these uh, three fields that people listen to more than they listen to the planners, of which I count myself, um, have all kind of reached the same conclusion independently in their own work. The economists, the epidemiologists, and the environmentalists. Right now, working Americans are paying as much for transportation as they are for housing, and poor Americans are paying 40% of their income just on transportation, because we've burdened them with this mandatory automobile ownership. So that's an economic argument. The, the most kind of empowering argument to discover as a planner was the doctors, the epidemiologists saying, you know, we have the, the first generation of Americans ever that are expected to live shorter lives than their parents. Fully a third of all children born after 2000 are expected by the CDC to become diabetic. And this is a function of the fact that, among other things, there are other concerns like diet. But these doctors are saying that the principal cause of this problem is that we've designed out of existence the useful walk in our communities. And so that we're no longer active as children, we're no longer active as, as adults. And then finally, the environmentalists who have turned on a dime because the environmentalist movement historically in this country has been an anti-city movement. If you live in the city, you produce the least carbon. And if you live in the countryside, you produce the most. And so um, the, it took a while, but the environmentalist movement picked up on that. And now they'll tell you, you know, the best thing you can do if you love nature is just to stay the hell away from it and live your life in a city, and the denser the better. Often the best projects face the most opposition because they're different than what people are used to seeing. We have plans for a reason. The reason that cities do comprehensive plans is in order to, through a public process, figure out you know, what sort of future the city wants to have and to come to a collective understanding as to what forms of growth will lead them to that future. What our leaders have to understand is that every project will create um, uh, opposition. And typically, people who are used to living nearby a beautiful piece of empty land will be quite opposed to seeing it developed. And uh, they'll be able to come up with many very good reasons why it shouldn't be developed or it should be developed in a different way. And they tend to be the ones who show up at the hearings, as opposed to those people who have no personal stake in the project, but stand to benefit as the whole metropolis stands to benefit when development is done properly. The reason I agreed to be filmed today was because I saw this plan, um, which I had no idea about, and said, holy cow, you know, this says a lot about our movement. This says a lot about new urbanism, that there's a plan in a city where I don't know the designer, I don't know the developers, um, and it meets all of the criteria that I apply to my own work and that we new urbanists have applied to our work for 30 years, my mentors before me. Um, and uh, it's, it's just tremendously satisfying to have worked for so long towards a goal of making this sort of development normal and then seeing it happening, um, you know, behind my back and then being shown the plan and said, you know, what do you think about this? And my response was, um, not only do I like it, but I would be uh, uh, honored to support it because it's the sort of development that needs to happen in all of our cities.